Good morning. My name is Tim Cavalli. I'm a Maine author. I was a park uh, ranger for 32 years, 18 of which I was supervisor of the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. And I've written these books, plus two others, uh, about the North Woods from children's to adult reads. And we guarantee that we can tell you a story that you never heard before. Today we're going to do a story called Andy's Surprise about something we saw a moose do on the Allagash River, which is in our pre-K K book. And thanks to the Berwick Library for having us down. We really appreciate uh, uh, having us in for this morning. And so re the schools that we go into, students tell me that reading is like having a movie in your mind. So with all our works, that's what we try to create. So you can read, think about it, and then picture what we're talking about or writing about. Today we're going to discuss how I write, where I get my ideas, hear how wild animals adapt to live in their environment, and other tales. We'll also discover New England's natural history, hear Northwood's mystery at this time. You may even learn how to roast a watermelon. Whenever I write a book, I read it out loud to my puppies, and I gauge their reaction to see if they like my books and if they do, that's why I write for evaluations of our stories. And my friend Elizabeth asked, where do your stories come from? And in this picture, I told her if she'd help me with this book, I'd buy her an ice cream cone. She got very intense on her trying to do enough work to earn that ice cream cone. And my stories do come from real life adventures. I write stories about the Maine woods. We live in Millinocket, outside of Mile High, Mount Katahdin. 65 miles northwest is the beginning of the Allagash Wilderness Waterway where people put a canoe in and paddle north for 92 miles because the river does flow north. And when you take your canoe out of the water, you look right into New Brunswick, Canada. And sometimes I get my ideas from others. I was teaching my puppy how to walk on a leash and the puppy took the leash and had it in his mouth and my neighbor walked by and my neighbor hollered out, hey Tim, who's walking who? So after I got done with my walk, I went back and wrote this poem. I took my puppy for a walk to see the world outside, to witness new sights, sounds and smells as he traveled by my side. I took my puppy for a walk and well, I'll be. Well, I thought I was walking him, he thought he was walking me. And the Allagash River offers a lot of fun for people who like to spend time outdoors and see a lot of wildlife. And this is the actual Allagash River trip. Are we ready to go canoeing? Sure. We've driven 65 miles northwest to Upper Allagash Stream where we put our canoe in the water. We're starting to paddle down the stream to Allagash Lake and we hear a noise around the corner. And you ever never know what that noise is going to be. Might be the splash of a beaver tail. Might be a deer running across the river or maybe a moose feeding so we get really quiet wondering what that splash, splash might be. And when we paddle around the corner, we see this ledge, and this ledge is soaking wet. And there's a black bear over here swimming back to shore. Sue and I get very quiet and pull off here. The bear doesn't know we're there. We watch the bear go up through the woods. He sits down on the ledge and slides down the ledge into the water. It's, it's a very hot day, by the way. We remain very quiet. The bear swims back to shore, goes up through, by this time that ledge is really, really wet, so when he sets down, he really slides fast into the water. About that time, I moved to get my camera, and when I did, he saw me move, and he ambled off into the woods, so we never did get a picture. But we do have, a, have that story in one of our books. <laughs> Floating along, we might see a pine martin. This is what they call a fur-bearing animal, has a gorgeous fur, but they're very, very shy. Uh, but they love to eat raspberries, and you're in the forest in August or when raspberries are ripe, if you're really quiet, you might see a pine martin eating raspberries. But again, they're very shy, or they won't hang along or around long once they know that people are around. Oh, we might see a brother and sister as we paddle by our, in our canoe. Oh, we might see a mother loon sitting on her nest.
And when I'm in schools doing this program, I explain why loons build their nests so close to the water. They're an amazing bird. They're very graceful in the water, but they spend 99% of their time in the water. And so Mother Nature has seen fit to place their legs on the far back of their body. And that's why they build their nests so close to water, because it's so hard to walk on land, so they can slip off their nest and get right into their transportation highway. Here we see a loon swimming under the water, and it's been uh, claimed that they can dive up to 200 feet deep. Here we have Amzaskus Lake. The wife of a ranger friend of mine is standing on the shore here fishing one day and she hears that sound coming out of the woods. She looks and here comes this lynx. He walks underneath her fish line while her pole's up in the air and she doesn't want to bring that fish line back because he's probably never been caught by a fish hook before. So she turns to her husband and says, do something, will you? He says, I am, I'm taking pictures just as fast as I can. And this is a mother lynx with her baby. And the main difference between lynx and bobcat are the tufts on the ears. Lynx have these, the, the bobcat don't. But look at the big paws. That's because lynx live in an area with very deep snows. So mother nature gave them big paws to act like snowshoes so they can get to the squirrels and rabbits that they like to eat. The biologists I talk with don't really know why they have the tufts on the ears but they are such excellent hunters, they think it aids them in hearing what they need to get for their food for them and their families. And as you're paddling along, you may actually find some old trains. These are still up in the woods. They were brought in for a 13 mile railroad track. Uh, they're one of the more popular parts of the area to, to visit and hundreds of people come each year, travel the Allagash just to see those old trains. And then you get the excitement of canoeing down a wild main river. This is Chase Rapids. This is class two, class three white water, meaning really rough water. But you can see this woman is having a great time. After a whole day of canoeing, we sit by the shore, enjoy the stars. Then from across the lake, we hear a sound. It's the call of the barred owl on the left-hand side of the screen. Now the call of the barred owl sounds like who cooks for you, who, who cooks for you. See if you can hear that. Play it one more time, Sue. So we're in our tents at our campsite, hearing that sound coming across the lake. The next cove over, there's a great horned owl saying, who? So we're hearing, who cooks for you? Who? Who cooks for you? Who? A classic comedy routine right out in the middle of the main woods. Which the bard? That's the bard, what they call the bard owl. That's a who cooks for you. And that's a great horn owl. Look at his ears. They kind of look like little horns, maybe. We had a bard owl in our yard two nights ago. We could hear him through the night. There were two of them, and they were talking back and forth. And that's exactly the sound they made. And I never knew that that's what they were. We, they were an owl, but I didn't know what we love that. We love that sound. It was like they were just talking to each other. Yeah. The next day, uh, we canoe down the lake and come to an old dam. This, uh, if we'd seen this the dam as it looks today, it's all washed out. But when it was part of the logging industry up there, it had a 17-foot head wall of water behind it. Today, this is all that's left. There is a campsite right here, and it's a gorgeous campsite. You look up towards Long Lake, and you'll see uh, osprey flying overhead. You'll see deer feeding on the buds of the wild rose bushes. You'll hear loons calling. You look down the river to the right and you'll see ducks swimming. You'll see moose feeding and you'll see trout jumping. But while it's a gorgeous campsite, the black flies are awful. Uh, in one of our books, a family gets there one afternoon and the black flies come screaming out of the woods to feed on the, on the new visitors that's just arrived. And so they go inside the tent well before the sun goes down to get some relief from the mosquitoes. While in the tent, one of the main characters in my book, my granddaughter, writes a poem about the black flies, and Sue's gonna read that poem now. No seams, gnats, and such. I do not like bugs. I do not like them at all. I don't like them big, 
and I don't like them small. They bite and chew and fly all about. They crawl in my mouth, and I spit them out. They make me itch. They make me rough. They make me twitch. I try to get away, but alas, I cannot. No matter where I go, there are always a lot. To these pests, I say, for them to leave and fly away. Do not bother while I am around and visit here when I cannot be found. I do not like bugs. I do not like them at all. The next time I canoe, it'll be in the fall. <laughs> Canoeing on a trip we see on the bank of the river, this old cabin, and you can almost imagine the stories that would come out of that cabin after a long day of being on the river or snowshoeing or fishing. And that cabin actually belonged to Henry and Alice Taylor. And this is that same cabin uh, when they lived there. And Henry's a neat old guy and I could almost write a book about Henry Taylor and his wife Alice by themselves. And he lived that, built that cabin on the river at a time before roads were in there. And if he wanted to go somewhere, he either had to walk, snowshoe, or canoe. And so I went down to see Henry to have a cup of coffee one morning. And he's telling me, he always told me a story. And he said, uh, Tim, did I ever tell you about the time I tried to fly a live pig in an airplane? And I said, no, Henry, you haven't told me that one. And he said, we'll have coffee and I'll, I'll tell, you, tell it to you. He says, uh, if I wanted to go to Fort Kent to get supplies, I'd have to go down river 45 miles, leaving my wife alone for one, two, three days, depending on weather conditions and wind and water levels and all of that. And I got worried about leaving her alone for so long a time, so I thought, if I buy an airplane, build a landing strip out behind my cabin, I could fly to Fort Kent, pick up my supplies, and come back that same day. He said, I bought a plane, I built a landing strip, I got very proficient at flying, and I went to Fort Kent and got supplies. I had my plane all loaded, and I saw a sign that said, Live Pigs for Sale. And he thought, you know, it'd be kind of nice to have a pig at camp. He says, so I bought it, but I was afraid the pig might not like to fly. So I tied its four legs together, put it on the back seat of the plane, and took off and climbed to 1,500 feet. He says, I'm up there, and he says, guess what? And I said, what? He said, the pig didn't like to fly. He started moving around, started getting restless. He came untied. Once he's at, untied and I'm at 1,500 feet, he's running back and forth inside the plane, trying to get out, break out through the side doors. The plane starts doing one of these numbers. I'm afraid I'm gonna crash at any minute and kill us both. He said, so I did the only thing I could do. I turned around, hit the pig between the eyes, knocked him out, and he slept all the rest of the way back to camp. And my ideas for stories come from my, my own adventures with, with my wife, Susan such as Andy. And now we're going to do the Andy the Moose program, and she's going to read the story while I work the computer. And now I'm going to read a story from Andy the Moose, and it's called Andy's Surprise. And we used to see Andy every day if we went up the lake, and he always had a favorite uh, spot that he used to like to eat. And uh, so my husband, Tim, decided to write a story about that moose. And this is it. Andy is a moose. He lives along Maine's Allagash Wilderness Waterway. Andy is tall and handsome. Like most moose, Andy has dark brown hair and big antlers. Andy likes the river and he likes to swim. Sometimes while swimming he even sees people paddling in a canoe. But Andy never lets people get too close. <clears throat> One day the sun is very hot so Andy decides to go swimming. Andy the moose splashes into the river. The cool blue water feels so good. So Andy sits down. With only Andy's head above water, Teddy Trout 
swims around the moose's ankles. What? Andy, the tr it's Teddy Trout. He swims around the moose's ankles. And I bet that makes Andy laugh because I bet that tickles. Andy is a happy moose. So he makes up a happy song. Water on my belly, trout by my toes. Wading in the river, water's running off my nose. Andy wants to stay all day. Teddy the trout nibbles on Andy's hoofs. The fish's nibble tickles Andy's toes. That makes Andy giggle. <laughs> and Andy sings. Water on my belly, trout by my toes. Wading in the river, water's running off my nose. Andy feels hungry. He loves to eat green grass. Andy knows the grass grows on the bottom of the river. Andy goes underwater to get a snack. But the water is deep. Andy goes underwater and disappears. So you don't see Andy anymore. Once he has a mouthful of food, he sits up with his head above water and Andy chews and swallows his lunch. Then Andy sings, water on my belly, trout by my toes, sitting in the river, grass underneath my nose. The food tastes good and Andy wants more. Andy the moose goes underwater again. A canoe with two people is floating towards the moose. Andy does not see the people or the canoe. The people do not see Andy. Andy disappears. Underwater, Andy the moose bites into a bunch of grass. The people float closer. Andy returns to the surface. When Andy's head emerges from the water, he's very surprised. The canoe is very near. Andy sees the people. The people see Andy. Uh oh, what's going to happen? Andy looks different than other moose the people have seen while canoeing. Water runs down between Andy's eyes. Water drips off Andy's nose. Floating grass covers his antlers. The grass sticks out from the corners of Andy's mouth. Each time Andy chews, the grass moves up and down. Andy looks funny. He looks funny, doesn't he? Yeah. What do you think the people are going to do? I don't know. The people in the canoe aren't sure if he's a moose. They holler, what is that? What is that? At the same time, Andy looks at the canoe and questions. What is that? The people are scared and quickly paddle away. Andy has never been so close to people before. Andy is as scared as the people, so he sputters. Water on my belly, trout by my toes, sitting in the river, saw a canoe that was way too close. Andy swims to the shore very fast. He hides behind some bushes and peeks at the people in the canoe. Can you see him in the bushes? Yeah, he's peeking out at the people. He doesn't know quite what they are. <clears throat> the people are laughing. Stepping to see his reflection in the water, Andy giggles and thinks. I guess I am funny looking. Andy smiles and walks back into the river. He looks to see if more people are coming. Andy doesn't see anyone, so he wades to his favorite spot. Andy 
is happy again. So he sits in the water and sings. Water on my belly, trout by my toes, wading in the river, water's running off my nose. Would you like to sing like a moose? No? You don't want to try singing like Andy? No? No? We'll all sing with you. Yeah. You'll we'll sing like a moose, won't you? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, we can all sing like a moose. Just read right up there. Read right here. Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. Water on my belly, trout by my toes. Wading in the river, water's running off my nose. Oh, you guys sing great like moose. <laughs> Andy is a very happy moose who likes living in the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. The end. Coming soon are going to be more adventures of Andy the Moose. Who do you think Andy's going to meet in the next story? Hmm, let's think a minute. It could be Sandy, our golden retriever. Oh, and it could be Lily Loon. And Sandy wants to thank everyone for having us visit, and she hopes you enjoy many outdoor adventures. There's Charlie. And Charlie the Beaver comes out. We have another book out, The Adventures of Charlie the Beaver. So the end. Did you enjoy the story?